Steve McMichael will not be able to travel for his induction into the Hall of Fame, which is unfortunate. And we're going to talk about C-Dub's thoughts and feelings coming out of the training camp. We're getting into all that and more on another episode of Chicago Bears Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. Your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. C-Dub and Hayes, I'm stepping in for Bobby today. Bobby taking care of some business. Uh, so I had to step in, hold it down for my brother, me and C Dub, holding it down. Uh, bro, let's start off right at the top, man. News. This just came out a few hours ago. Uh, Steve McMichael, who we know has been Mongo, who's been dealing with some health things for a couple of years now, is being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, he will not be able to travel to Canton, Ohio, for his induction into the Hall of Fame due to his ALS. Uh, how you feeling about that, uh, C Dub? Hey, first off, I would like to say, man. Uh. My prayers go out to Mondo McMichael and his family. And second of all, we missing out. I mean, congratulations, though, on the Hall of Fame. But we missing out on the personality that this guy was on accepting that award and giving him a speech. That would have been sports like gravy, bro. I'm telling you, that guy got a personality like, man, if you ain't never heard him speak and you ain't never get it to experience his personality on broadcast and things like that. You missed out, bro. So congratulations, Mondo McMichael, man. Uh, um, my condolences. Condolences. Yeah, it, it's, it, it sucks. It, it, you know, it is what it is. Like, the thing is that he is being acknowledged. He's getting to the Hall of Fame. Him, Devin Hester, Julius Peppers, three former Chicago Bears all getting to the Hall of Fame this year. So you love that. He'll be inducted by Jarrett Payton, the son of Walter Payton. So there you go on that one. Um, but it's not going to stop us from celebrating him, right? So we'll be uh, we'll be there for the Hall of Fame game because we're going to have to be live because the Bears f- have the first game of the preseason in the Hall of Fame game. So we're going to definitely celebrate uh, Steve McMichael there. So shout out to Mongo. Uh, but with that said, moving on from that uh, news, uh, C-Dub, how you feel about it? I know I've, I've talked about it all week, every day after training camp. I've kind of talked about it on the dailies. But what have you, how have you felt about what you've heard coming out of uh, Chicago Bears mini camp so far? Man excitement uh, nervousness uh it's all type of feelings when when you hear all the news that's coming out i wish i could be there on the sideline watching bro damn i want to watch you gotta go to some of those public practices in july man i definitely do um all news most news is caleb williams is is getting better about a day getting better about a snap uh you got the wild receivers out there being like having an internal competition who going to race to get a thousand yards. I just see a lot of, a lot of excitement in the team. And I just can't wait till we get full action with these guys. I am worried. It's Nate Davis. Like, you know, people keep sound, trying to sound alarms about Nate Davis. what do you think about that? Like, should we be alarmed when Nate Davis uh, drips? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I say this until I see otherwise. I, yeah, I'm going to be alarmed because when you hear that someone we got some voicemails on there. But it's, when you hear somebody is uh, doesn't like to practice, which, like I said, there are some there are a lot of veterans more uh, more than we know that don't really care for practice, don't care for OTAs. They're going to try to get out of they're going to pull a random hammy uh, during practice and sit down. But the thing is, if you're going to be somebody who doesn't like to practice, you got to be a one on game day. And that is not what we've seen from Nate Davis. And that is why it's a concern so far, right? So if he gets on the football field in preseason, in game one of the regular season, and he just looks like a dog, all right, cool. We're not worried about it. But up until then, all we got from him is 11 games, six games missed. And in those 11 games, he probably only looked good in about four to five of them. Now, I yep. know he's a talented guy. He was talented before he got here. There's a reason why he's been able to stick around the NFL. There's a reason why he was coveted in the free agent market. There's a reason Ryan Pose just doesn't go after people that don't at least have some promise, right? Yeah. So there's a reason why Ryan Poles went after him. But all those reasons don't fucking matter if you can't stay on the football field. And then when you're on the football field, we're still looking like, eh, that's kind of mid, bro. You got a three-year, $10 million deal per year, bro. You got to show up. So until we see it, I'm I'm pessimistic until I see otherwise. But now, like I said, the moment he's on the football field and it looks good, I'll shut the hell up. But up until then, you got to show me more, brother. And how about the moment, Drip? Like, is it a bit of selfishness? Like, this is like a different, you're going through a different thing. We're trying to get a young quarterback acclimated into the league. 
-hmm. he would probably need you in every situation. You know what I'm saying? The mini camp, OTA. I think I think you want to be there with your rookie quarterback to make sure he's right. But maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean. The thing is, a lot of veterans, let's just say a lot of veterans across the league don't look at minicamp as like this this huge thing. When training camp opens, if we're seeing the same shit, all right, we got a problem. Oh, yeah. For sure. So we'll see, though, man. Uh, how you feel about hearing where the defense is so far for the Bears? Oh, man. You, you, you know what? You know what's the best thing? It's good that they killing out there. But the best thing is they doing it with attitude. Bro. Yeah. I'm hearing that 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 they're being uh forming a a reputation as a talking team, like they talking to the offense out there. Yeah. Like man, man, I love it, man. That it just it's the Chicago Bears, the monsters of the midway. We gotta have a great defense. Can we have great offense and defense at the same time? Let's go, man. I'm so excited for this team. We got we yeah. just play the ball. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree, man. I think that um, what we're what we're hearing from the defense is bringing a lot of excitement for the defense to be, you know, top five defense is what a lot of people are talking about. And they just got to bring it. We know that this defense is returning like 97 percent of the starters that they have from last year. So there's more than enough reason to believe, whereas the offense may take a little time to jail. There's more than enough reason to believe that this defense is going to be able to hit the ground running to start the season. And we're going to need that. So let's hope that that's the case as well. And they're young, too. They're young. Mm -hmm. Maybe Montez Sweat and T.J. Edwards are probably the elder statesman, but they're not old, old. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they could be good for a long time, Drip. They could right. be. They could right. be. Let's hope so. Let's hope so, man. Um, but let's go ahead. It is Sunday, so that means it is Saturday. Sat Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Jesus, I'm a day ahead, bro. That's you know why? Because when by the time we record, it's usually Sundays, right? I'm stepping in for Bobby, so my brain's in Sunday mode. Um. But all right, let's go ahead and get into these mailbags. This is Saturday's mailbag day. Let's go and play this first voicemail now. Bobby, C Dub. Hey, the cognac boys. What's happening, fellas? It's your man, Marifa Star, black yet again, man. Listen, man, I'm in CBC. I'm out here, man, chilling on the river, kicking it, man, enjoying the peaceful tranquilities of the summer. And I'm sitting there thinking, man about training camp okay and we're gonna talk about caleb williams and the defense man that's shopping him up man now listen man in the bible it says in proverbs 27 17 it say iron shopping iron man and you know what that means it means that a man gonna shopping another man up and make sure that it right and that's what the defense man is doing to caleb williams man they kicking his ass every single day in training camp and putting that pressure on that boy and putting talking shit to his face, man, and telling him, man, you need to get your shit together, man, in order for you to be great in this league, man. We're going to put you through the test of fire, okay? The defensive line is on his ass. The defensive backfield is on his ass. The linebacker is on his ass. Intercepting passes from him in training camp. But that's what, guess what? That's only going to make Caleb better, okay? That's going to make sure that Caleb is doing what Caleb is supposed to do to grow. So by the time week one come around, man, Caleb going to be ready. He going to be battle tested. He going to be gone through the fire. He going to be ready to get out there and face any adversity he see on any defensive line from any team that he's facing in the NFL. Our defense is top five, okay? We got a top five defense, and we going to get Caleb ready, and he going to be prepared to face the NFL. And he ain't going to be scared to go out there and do his thing, okay? Because the defensive line and the defense of the Chicago Bears go tighten his ass up and make sure that he's going to be doing what he's supposed to do in the NFL, okay? So listen, man, I'm going to have to get up out of here, man. I got place to go. People to see. You know what I'm going to say, man, before I leave? It's going to be Chicago up. And bad out, baby. Let's go. <laughs> ref him. <laughs> hey, you gotta love Marifa aside, bro. Like you just gotta love that dude, man. He the energy that he brings is crazy, man. Um, what do you think? Of what what he's saying as far as the defense helping make Caleb Williams and overall the offense better through this uh, OTAs training camp, all those all that type of stuff. You know, man. Shout out to my man Marifa, man, and and I agree with him a hundred percent. And I'd even go as far as this. Everybody says that. Uh, Caleb Willem, Caleb came into the best situation offensively 
maybe we've seen in about 25 years. But can I say that the defense may be a better situation for him than the offense this year? Because we got a young, hungry defense, and they molded him in practice. And when he gets to play regular teams like a Titans or something, he already played the best. Plus, they're going to be able to help him out in the regular season games when he's trying to get acclimated to the NFL. So I agree with this 100%. And this may, the defense may be a better situation than the offense, if you can dig that. I don't think it's a maybe. I think it's a it's a certainty that the offense is, the defense is in a much better spot right now than the offense is, and that's because, like I said, they're 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 returning all of their start. The only starters that aren't returning there are Justin Jones and uh, Eddie Jackson. Other than that, everybody else is is the same starter. And even the person replacing Justin Jones is a uh, is a uh, Javon Dexter. He was on the roster last year. I guess also unique in Gakwe, even though he didn't finish the season because he got hurt. We're not returning him. But in his place is Demarcus Walker, who was also on the team. So there, there's there's a, a lot of reasons why, football reasons why, the Chicago Bears defense should be starting uh, as far as in the season being better off than the offense. And we just got out. The, the defense is going to be a big reason why we are winning games early on. I just I just I fully believe that. And and that's that's a serious thing. I'm with you, Drip. That's a serious thing because you're talking about it's a, it's a better situation than the offense with D.J. Moore, Keenan Allen. Uh, Roma Duzia, all those running backs, Cole Komet and Ever, with a quarterback that they say got generational type skills. Yes, that, because and it's because that's a rookie, and despite what some people tell you, he's still gonna go through like he's going through rookie shit. In, in yes, so yeah, he's he could be very well generational. That's not me doubting him his ability to be generational. But again, look at Peyton Manning's rookie season; he sucked ass. Yeah. Is he not a generational quarterback? Oh, absolutely. So, like, th this expectation that some people have that because the generational l label was thrown on Caleb Williams, that that doesn't mean he's going to struggle. It does. And I'm not saying that overall in the season. My hope is by the end of the season, the offense and defense are are, are level-headed or are at the same place. Oh, exactly. But I just to start the season off, there's more than enough reason to believe that the defense should start off more closer to their finished product than what the offense is going to start off. That's 100% correct. And if anybody's triggered off that, that's. That, I don't know what to do. I mean, listen, that that's fans, bro. Uh, one thing I do is I love them. And like I've been saying lately on a uh, Chicago uh, Bears Central on the daily episodes, is like, hey, I hope that the Bears do hit these crazy expectations that some people have for them. Because if they do, that means that we, listen, that's, the season going to be going to be bananas if that's the case. Dub? I'm on. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but let's go ahead and get it and play the next voicemail. We're going to go ahead and get into that now. Yo, yo, CBC, Chicago Bears Central, what's that word? How y'all living? It's your boy, Big Vaughn, all the way from the low end, man. Y'all know I have to tap in with y'all, boy, with the daily bread. Y'all know how I'm coming. Hey, man, the Bears is looking nice in these little uh, OTAs, man. I'm not even going to hold you. I know, I know, the pads ain't on, and you know it's no contact, but I'm telling you, it's just a different energy, bro, around the building. It's a different energy with this set of guys we got. And, you know, uh, I'm actually enjoying the little tidbits and the little reels and the content that we're getting from Chicago Bears YouTube pages. And as far as the IG, like, I just feel the energy, bro. Like, you can tell our defense is out there humming. Keenan Allen said it himself. It, it, we looking like a top five defense, and we talking like a top five defense, man. I really believe, and I'm going to keep saying this, I really think we're going to light it up, bro. Like, as y'all know, as faithful Chicago Bears fans, our defense always been ahead of our offense for years. From the beginning of our 100-plus years existing, like, dog, the defense, that's, that's just what we hang our hat on. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's our identity, and it's been our identity um, since the beginning of this organization. I just feel like these guys that we have, they embodying that so much, man, and they carrying it. You know what I'm saying? See D Walk come up off the edge. He looks mean to this year. He looking like he's ready to take a step. Chance look like he's ready to get busy. And I'm telling y'all, Book, I feel like Book is gonna be a surprise, man. So y'all look out for Austin Book. I do believe he gonna win that starting job opposite of Montez Sweat. Because with a guy like Montez Sweat, you put a young hungry D in on the on the opposite side who got, you know, some crafty and he's bendy and he got a nice skill set. 
I believe he's going to cook. And as far as the offense, you know, that's all up to Caleb Williams. You know what I'm saying? I've seen the throws he's making. I'm not going to act like he's Superman or act like he's our savior, but dude really looks nice, bro. If he could really go out there on that field, put it on wax like my boy Bobby say, I'm telling y'all, the sky's the limit. Race to a thousand, what have you. I'm taking Keenan Allen. I already said it. So I'm ready to rock, man. Overall, I just feel like the energy around the team and around the building and, you know, what we're doing and what we're growing up, it's, it's infectious, man. And it's spreading from the guys that's uh, part of the team all the way to the fans. And it's our time, man, and rightfully so. We deserve that. So, boy, Big Bun, just checking in. Y'all know I have to tap in with y'all boys. Love y'all. Love what y'all doing. Keep pushing. And I'm going to get up with y'all boys. Chicago all the way up. Sit down, baby. Let's get it. And FBG, too. <laughs> hey, listen. And we'll end every G- every uh, voicemail with FGB. Just go ahead and throw. It's just like salt. Just go ahead and throw a little bit on top of it. It's okay. We'll we'll deal with it. Um, I think that's a great voicemail. Uh, what do you what do you what are you thinking, uh, C Dub? Um, I agree with you. Uh, my man. Shout out to my man, uh, Big Bond from the low end. I agree with you, big dog. And I just want to show you the difference in like the energy around this team, like. From like last year, it's like last year I, I was I was excited and nervous, but I was more on the nervous side. You don't know if this was the last year of that certain quarterback. You don't know how good the team overall will be. But this year, I'm still nervous, but it's more excitement this time because I'm mm-hmm. so eager to see what we can do on this football field and with all the names and the, the accolades and the and the compliments our players been getting, I wonder, I really wonder, is it true or not? So I agree with you. It's a lot of excitement around this team. Definitely, definitely. And, and I mean, it is it is definitely a different feel around the team. I think that, uh, it, you know, the, things have changed. And it's always going to be an air of excitement when you have a new rookie quarterback that was drafted number one overall. That's always going to come. It's always going to be there. The additions that we've made, adding Keenan Allen, Romo Dunze, DeAndre Swift, getting Shane Waldron, don't overlook that. It's going to all bring in a lot of new excitement to a team that we've been missing that. We've been needing that excitement level, right? So um, I, all I can say is this, and this is what I've been saying. On paper, we are shaped up to have one of the best teams that we've had in a long time. But not not a goddamn thing was won on paper. I'm just, I'm just holding off to see it. That's it. Like yeah. It's not that I doubt our ability to get there, but I've seen really talented teams before disappoint. And that's not to say that this, like there have been a lot of, and especially in the first year, that doesn't mean that, for example, I know this is a different sport, but look at Luke and Kyrie last year. People were literally saying, Hey, these two motherfuckers can't play together. Mm -hmm. And now they're in the finals this year. So I just, I I just, I need to see it all come together because there's so many moving pieces. There's so much on the football team that could go wrong. Even if they all are great, a injury or something could all take that away real quick, right? So, and that, I don't wish that on nothing. So, I just got to see it, bro. I'm excited. I know the potential that we have. I've said it. We have the potential to be top 10 in offense and defense this year. I truly believe that. But I just got to see it, bro. I just got to see it, man. And, 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 and we're old that right. So, don't be thinking we petty if y'all out of the Chicago Bears fans, uh, you know what I'm saying, our field or whatever, because we owe that. We've been bullshitted for a long time, so we take the right to wait and see. Yeah, the right. Just gotta tell you, like, listen, I just gotta see it, bro. I've been disappointed a lot. I was real hyped last year around this time. We saw how that went. Came out with three straight losses to start the season. Let me hey, ask listen. you something, though, Drill. What when you said you were excited last year before yeah. season, was it? Did you have a little nervousness in there because you ain't know what it was going? You knew it was like this is like a you gotta prove it this year. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for you know, sure. Nervous sure, to him, yeah. you nervous to how to have, but you have a nervousness in that big dog. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think last year it was like the, it was so unproven in what our division was going to look like, right? It was up for grabs in our division, so you had a lot of room to think like, hey, we can just. And to the credit, the Bears lost a lot of close games. You turn some of those close games around, we right there, right? So, um, but yeah, it was some nervousness. It was some pessimism for me. And th- and is that a little bit wearing into this season? Yeah. But I, listen, I know that this is a super ex- extremely talented team, and we don't got dusty ass Luke Getty uh, uh, calling plays anymore. So you know, like like I said before, OTAs, training camp, mini camp, 
all that shit for the offense. We got to get the Getzyism up off the offense, right? We got to get it, get it off there, and then we can see what we got, man. <laughs> so, I can't believe he got a job right away. <laughs> right That's away. Funny. That's a lot. What? Man. All right, let's get into it, man. Uh, let's go ahead and play this next voicemail. Yo, 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 what's up, fellas, man? It's your boy K2 again, man. Look here, bro. Now, I just wanted to call in real quick, man, because I've been I've been hearing some stuff, man. And I just I just thought I might touch on the man and shed some light to it. It's about Nate Davis. Okay. Just before I say anything, man, I just want y'all to know I'm coming from a place. I'm coming from a place of love. Okay, you understand? I'm coming from a place of love. Okay, so I've been reading some comments about Nate Davis, man, and you know, obviously, there's been a lot of things that's been said about uh, about him in the um, in the Chicago community, man. But you know, I read something that really that really kind of upset me, man, because I saw that somebody put that he he was a piece of shit and he was lazy as fuck and all this other stuff, man. And it's like I think we all need to realize something, man. Like, let's just take a step back because he he lost a family member, bro. Like, that's not something to take lightly you know like i know he shows up and he don't play and all this other stuff like but we also don't know what he's going through mentally and i know as fanatics man we get like this thing of of, um, of joy because we want to see people we want to see the players that we you know sign and draft and we want to see them on the field because that's what we want you know what i'm saying at the end of the day man like we don't know what he's going through spiritually mentally and where his heart is, man, like, you know, like, losing a family member is something that is serious, a serious situation, man, and it takes people a, a, a long time to get over that, and we don't know who this family member was that died in his family, you know what I'm saying, like, we, we still don't know, and if y'all do know, maybe that person was dear to his heart, you know what I'm saying, like, I understand when he shows up, he still should do his job, and he still should, but I'm gonna be a human about this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going a, I'm to a not be a, a fanatic for one second, and I'm going to be a human about it, man, and just say, give him some time, because I want to see him out there, too. I want to see him at our right guard position, which I believe he will be, because as long as he's ready to go for training camp, I think that's what matters most. But in the meantime, man, you know, as long as he's showing up and engaging, and I'm pretty sure he's 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 – uh, 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 part of the activities, you know what I'm saying? Like he probably ain't practicing and stuff like that, man. But just let's just understand that he kind of going through. He's still a young man. And he he going through something, bro. He lost somebody, and that's just not something to take lightly, man. So I, I appreciate it if all you Bears fans are ease up just for a second, bro, and just understand that this man is human. He is human, just like the rest of us, bro. And he going through the thing, man. That's all I wanted to say. Um, hope y'all having a good weekend, man. Just remember, Chicago up, bad out. All right, K2, just to add to we do know who he lost. He lost his mother. And we've talked about that. Like, don't get me wrong. I would be messed up for years if it came down to me losing my mother. And I and I don't want to take away the human element of that. But at the same time, and I know this is going to sound cold-hearted. I don't mean that. You got a job to do. Period. Uh, not many of us could not show up and, and actually not perform at work for a year and then still have jobs, right? So... I, that's just what it comes down to. I get what you're saying, and the human element absolutely plays a part. I don't want to act cold-hearted to the human element at all because I understand it. It sucks, and I, my prayers go up to him and his entire family. But at the end of the day, you st you are you are paid to do a job, and he needs to do that job, bro. Like that's if he if he doesn't want if he's not in a place to be able to do it, then tell the Bears, hey, let's go ahead. We can agree to a buyout. I'll give you all a lot back. Y'all can go find somebody else. If you're not going to do that, you got to show up to work. Perfectly said, Griff. And I want to touch on something you said, the uh, human element. First off, shout out to uh, Nate Davis. Uh, prayers up for the loss in your family. Uh, I hope you can get, I don't want to say get past. I don't know if that's, it sounds a little insensitive, but you can deal with that the way that you could and you find some type of peace. But uh, on the other side of human element, can the Chicago Bears, run an organization though can they yeah. do their job it, i mean is that fair we gotta yeah. how long do we wait do that sound a little too rude you know what i'm saying it's a business you know what i'm saying and it's all prayers to nate davis but we trying to go into another season and you know accomplishing things that's all i'm saying so if yeah, that's i'm fair. 
Yeah, and, and like I said, I want to I want to tiptoe the line there because I I don't want to sound cold hearted in regards to the loss that he had because I feel you there. I understand it, but like you said, the Bears still got an organization that they have to run, and we still like the games don't stop and. Like I said, I know that sounds cold hearted, but there's really no other way to say it. If I if you guys find can know a better way to say that, charge it to my mind, not to my heart. Um, but we 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 need performance out of that position. It it it, it we we need it. And I agree with like the people calling them a piece of shit and stuff yeah. like that. Like that is a, a bit much, right? And we actually had a voicemail from my boy Fred that I didn't play because uh Fred went in a little bit. Uh but you know, it you you gotta you gotta at the end of the day. It, this is this is a job for everyone and you anyone here who who's lost family members knows unfortunately eventually you got to get back to work yep. that's just the that's just the reality that's the reality of it for all of us there's no difference in that reality for football players is what i can say yeah 100 there's no pause button there's no stop button the world gonna keep evolving so, yep with yeah that's it let's get into this What'd you say? No, I say oh, okay. oh, I'm hearing myself back in the loop. Okay. Uh, but let's get into the last voicemail and we get out of here, man. Let's go ahead and play that now. Yo, 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 Bobby, see the this book, man. Blessings to you and yours. Hey, I, I mentioned this before, I think on one of the uh streams in the chat, man, but I wanted to vocalize it to y'all, man, so I can get y'all opinion. Remember how everybody before the draft and everything, a lot of the media, a lot of folks in general was talking about how Caleb was like pretty much like a problem child and stingy and, you know, all, you know, all for himself, selfish and all this other stuff. Ain't it funny how now it's like dead silence about that and the person who should be getting that title, which is Marvin Harrison Jr., and you know why he's saying nothing about it? Because look at everything that he's doing right now. He is everything that they said Caleb was, man. And I'm actually kind of glad that the Bears didn't get him, man, because it looked like they kind of dodged the bullet. Also, I feel the same way about uh, Harbaugh, too, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not – I know everybody is Harbaugh crazy, man. I'm not, man. And then if you pay attention to what he's doing over there to the charges, man, you know, it's a, a lot of – folks leaving and a lot of folks getting traded so i don't know maybe they just don't want to play for him but that's beside the point my point is you know talking about marvin harrison jr man he's the problem child it looks that everybody said caleb was and i think some folks owe caleb an apology I'm not gonna lie i was a justin guy but i never i never down talk or said anything bad about caleb because i don't have to down one to up the other but that's just me not everybody's built that way but that's all I wanted to say, man. Again, blessings to you and yours. Shout out to the family and crew. Chicago up, bear down, and I'll holler. I must have missed something. Uh, there's been problems with Marvin Harrison Jr. The last article that I read is his coaches said that he practices too much, which isn't a bad thing. Maybe they're talking about his, uh, he didn't sign a contract until recently. I think recently he signed it. Oh, I don't know what it really was. I mean, Caleb and Rome still haven't signed their contracts, I don't think. No, I don't think so. They have So, yeah, if that's what you're talking about as a problem, child, I mean, I I I just haven't heard anything about Marvin Harrison Jr. being a problem. I've heard about him, like I said, literally, the last article I read from him was the head coach says, hey, he's practicing too much. <laughs> like, I would love to hear that. Like, I would love to hear that about Vegas Jones. Is he practicing too much? <laughs> Oh, that's what he's talking about. The fanatics thing. That yeah, you said that he didn't sign the contract for them to be able to sell his merchandise. Oh, okay, okay. okay. God, that's not a big I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn about that. I mean yeah, about that. Yeah, give a shit good. about that. Like that's the team. Like if he don't want to make merch money, that's on him. But the <laughs> but the football field shit, I would love to hear somebody say that they're practicing too much. I would love oh, to hear that. That's that's the that's what you should be gunning for as you a go if you're a coach. You want to hear that from mostly yeah. all your players. But uh, I want to go to John Harbaugh. Look, John Harbaugh finna be successful in this league, bro. And John Harbaugh do it his way. He old school. If you don't get down like he get, he gonna move you, bro. <laughs> That's John. Why you, Harbaugh. why you give that man a whole different name? Jim Harbaugh. Jim, bro. Jim. Yeah, Jim. One of them. <laughs> Tomato. <laughs> hey, this man said your name start with a J. I'm gonna call you something that starts with a J. <laughs> but I, I like Jim Harbaugh, though. Drip. 
What's wrong with Jim Harbaugh? That tough-minded. You know, I mean, nothing to me. Like him saying that like, players are wanting to leave and get traded. I think that's more a franchise than a coaching thing. Personally, like I wouldn't mind Jim Harbaugh to be the coach of the Bears at, at all. It's like so. Book. Hey, listen. Book. Everybody's entitled to their opinion and their view. I'm not trying to come at Book for his, but like. Like I said, I'm hearing, I'm seeing good stuff about Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't care if you can sell his merch or not. That's on him if you don't want the merch money. I care about the shit on the football field, and it sounds like he's performing on the football field. So. Yeah, and with, when it comes to Caleb and he was all those negative throats and whatever they was calling him, that's just that, the narratives, bro. They Everybody got a narrative they want to drive. So when you get to see him for yourself and see it with your own eyes, then you make your own conclusion. I'm glad shows like this, like CBC and and uh swifty and uh windy city breeze is out here you know what i'm saying they can give yeah. you the real you know what i'm saying instead of trying to drive a nar narrative type shit so Bro, you know that book though yeah like i said uh, all the time my my recent thing is there's so many stats analytics and everything else you can dive into and spend your whole day dissecting rather than focus on narratives and half of the narratives be wrong like so the, like that that's the thing that matters to me is what is what actually happens what we, what's tangible and what all what all that type of shit i don't really care about the narratives man uh when it comes to caleb i, I i'm glad that it's less talk about whether his nails are painted whether his lips are pink whether he's carrying a pink pink phone or not i don't give a shit personally i don't care about none of that i said it before and i'm gonna say it again and people are gonna wild out i don't give a damn if kayla williams is grabbing 10 dicks a day i don't care what he's doing if he's throwing three touchdowns and 300 yards every single week as long as it's not criminal and he's going to jail i don't care what kayla williams does in his personal life i don't give a damn some of y'all daddies was doing worse shit. that's why your mama kicked him out so like I, I, i'm not worried about that my boy i'm not worried about it as long as that motherfucker throw touchdowns man, it don't matter it don't matter to me what the hell he do. Y'all be worried about the wrong shit, bro. Like that's that's just like like bro, you could gun them though, bro. Like, I mean, you can flame them. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm know? not against the flaming. I'm talking about them saying like mix. Don't mix the two, right? Yeah. I could flame somebody and say that they're still a good football player, like Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup, bro. Like ain't no <laughs> reason for him to act hood, bro. Where he's from, none. But the mo I would love the motherfucker on the team, bro. Wait a minute! How did you get the Cooper Cup, bro? Did you not see the Cooper Cup do rag pick? I have not seen the Cooper Cup do rag pick, bro. What's bro, up? Let me see if I can find it, bro. Ain't no way Cooper Cup got a <laughs> Tupac scarf on your land. <laughs> bro, hold on, I'm gonna no find it, like bro. Nas, bro. No way. <laughs> I'm gonna find it, bro. The motherfucker was trying to lay them edges, bro. Like, <laughs> like. Like, I can flame C-Double about being bald-headed. You know what? He's the best live caller in the goddamn business, bro. <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, shit. I got to see Cooper Cup. I'm going to find it, bro. I'm going to find it before we do <laughs> our episode Sunday, and I'm gonna, that's going to be on the thumbnail just in the corner somewhere on that motherfucker. You got to put that motherfucker up. I could not imagine this dude with a damn scarf on his head, bro. You try to get waves, Cooper Cup. <laughs> I ain't to get waves, bro. Yay. Fucking Travis Kelsey is from Strongsville, Ohio. He act more black than most people. Like, what are we doing, bro? Like, I'm not worried about this type of stuff. Y'all be worried about the wrong shit, man. <laughs> oh shit, that was hey, bad. Hey, 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 you, you, <laughs> you, you, you think Travis Kelsey eats uh, chitlins? Hell yeah, you think you don't? <laughs> what? Hell yeah, you know he eats chitlins, bro. <laughs> you think the question is, you think Taylor eats chitlins? <laughs> Oh hell no, nah, bro! Hell no! Nah, hell no! Nah, hell no! Nah. Hell no! Nah. Nah. She 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 no no no! Hell no! Nah, nah. nah, she probably eat some ass though. Anyway, let's go <laughs> and get up out of here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We love you guys, man. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, man. Y'all make sure y'all go show some love to Bobby. Man. Only on this show, <laughs> in the Swift Cat straight. Yeah, yeah. You can follow us at Shy Bears Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. Chicago Bears Central, you want to call? Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, number to do so, 773-242-9336. We're the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. We'll see y'all tomorrow, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, 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 break.